In this walkthrough, I want to go ahead and show you what you can do if you don't have an enterprise license. You only have a standard license. You're not on SharePoint Online. You're on-prem 2013 or 2016. And you still want to be able to have the kind of the power of the content search web part, but you don't have the license for it. So instead, uh, you could use the search results web part, which is pretty interesting and pretty cool. I'm building off of a previous example where I have a content search web part that is pulling in some data. And what I want to make sure we see here is that in this, we've got a query that's coming back with three properties under commercial, three under under rental and then under residential we get two. So it's a total of eight properties coming back. We need to remember that number. Let's go ahead and edit this page and we're going to add a new web part and the web part we're going to add is under search. It's the search results web part. So once I add this we can go ahead and edit some settings here. So we're going to edit the web part and this looks kind of similar to the content search web part. We have the change query. We have display templates and settings. That's pretty fascinating. One of the first things we can look at here is what's providing the results for this query. We want to make sure it's this web part. By selecting this web part, we can then click on change query and set the query up. Now the default query here is going to be based on a search query box. Yeah, we don't need that because we want to define it. So we want to set the path and we want it to contain this site collection. Uh, and the other thing we want to do is <clears throat> we want the content type to contain a special value. And this is what we're going to do to select our specific content type. So let me add this here and we'll test it and see what happens. And let me tell you what's going on here. I said go look at the manage property path and make sure that the path contains this site collection. That site collection URL is effectively this URL here at the top. That's the path to the site collection. The next thing we did was we said filter out everything that contains this content type ID. This is the actual query that we used in the other one. But why this works is because what we want to do is we want to pull out just content pages that are tied to this specific content type, which is this Pixel property. That's a custom content type that I created, and I tied content to that specific content type. So now I can say, well, filter it out, and I can see I get a list of results. But check this out. The results that come back, there's only six of them. But there should be eight, not six. So what's going on there? Well, let's go ahead and let's pump that for now, and I'll come back to that, because that's one of the big things we'll need to change. If we go to display templates, I can select a display template now. I created some other display templates for us. The reason why display templates that I use for content search web parts are available here, though, there's a very important distinction that I had to set, and I'm going to go with accordion here. The reason why that works is because, let's go to another tab, and we're going to go to the master page gallery. So we're going to site settings, master pages, and page layouts. And then I'm going to drill into where my particular display templates are. Yours are going to be wherever you've placed them. If I go ahead and I look at the control template for accordion, and I edit the properties, if I scroll down a little, I'm going to find this target control type here. You need to make sure that you've checked the areas you would like this display template to be available. I want it to be available in both content search web parts as well as search results web parts. So that's where we're able to say that this control template should be visible for search results as well. I can do the same thing for the item template. Now this is a search results web part, so search results normally is going to try to use result types to figure out what item display template to use. We don't need to do that here. We want to make sure we always use the same exact item template. So I'm going to just say I'm going to use this backup item accordion that I created. Now let's check out some of the other settings that are going on here. We're going to limit it to 20. There's a lot of other options that are just not needed for content search. Like we don't care about showing a promoter results or did you mean. We don't need to show advanced link or a result count. We do need to make sure we keep the show ranked results though. That's actually our results. We need to show that. So when I now click OK and I then save this page, let's see what happens. Okay, so I've got listings here under this commercial type. And I'm seeing three here, and then I'm seeing three more, a total of six. But we showed that there should be eight. What is going on here? Why is this not working? Why are we not getting the eight results? The reason why is because the search results web part, by default, is trying to trim what it thinks are duplicates. And that can cause us a problem. So what we need to end up doing, this is where it gets a little tricky, unfortunately, is we need to export our search results web part. And we need to make some little magic changes. So I'm going to go ahead and export that web part. and. And look at it. Let me show you the properties here. If I scroll all the way to the top, I'm going to find a property called data provider JSON. This is a JSON variable that's being sent to SharePoint to tell it what to do. And one of the things, this is the key one here, is we need to find something called trim duplicates. And trim duplicates is set to true. So I need to set that to false. So I'm setting trim duplicates to false. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find the title. And I'm going to make it something unique demo or property search. 
Okay, so now that I've got that, I can go ahead and take that web part, and I need to re-import that web part. So if I go back to SharePoint Designer, I can go ahead and close some of these other things I don't need. And if I go to All Files, and then under All Files, I'm going to go to Catalogs, underscore Catalogs and find WP for web part. I'm going to the web part gallery. What I need to do now is I need to create a dot web part file that I can now use to import that XML that we saw. Now you could use kind of any of these as your base because all we really need is just a web part file but I'm just going to go ahead and take this timeline file. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it back here and I'm going to rename the file. I'm going to rename it to demo property search. All right, I'm going to edit the file and I'm going to paste in that web part that I modified. And let me go look for that trim duplicates and we'll see that trim duplicates here is properly set to false. So I can now save the demo property search web part file. Now before I use that, I do need to do one thing, which is I need to put it in the proper group. So I'm going to go back to site settings and under Web Designer Galleries, I'm going to go to Web Parts so I can find the Web Part Gallery. And I'm going to look for my file, which is the Demo Property Search file. This is the one that I just added. I can add it to my own category if I want. I'm just going to put it in the default Web Parts, which is going to dump it in the, the miscellaneous area, which is just fine. So at this point, I don't need these results. These results are going to get in my way because it's not going to take my changes. I need to now go and add in the new web part that I just imported. So if I go to miscellaneous, I should see default web part because that was the category name. We'll see my new demo property search. If I go ahead and click on add for that and click on save, well, we should now see our eight properties. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight properties. So that's really it. That's the, that's the hard part, was that one little bit of code that we need to have, which is you need to export that web part. You need to look for this keyword here of trim duplicates. You need to set it to false, and then you need to re-import it into your web part gallery. Once it's been imported into your web part gallery, you can now use it almost just like you did a content search web part. One thing that you can't change that you could change in the content search web part is the managed property mapping. So that is the one big block, but I found most end users don't know how to do that anyhow and you can get them in trouble. So if you wanted to create a web part that allows people to remap the managed properties using the search results web part, you can't do that. But what you can do is you could create a generic search results web part that already has that trim duplicates to false and that can now be your base for content search web parts in general. Like if you now needed to provide that sort of roll up capability, you could set that up once for your users and then from then on they can just use your new quasi content search web part. They could then change the query as needed, they can change the display templates as needed, etc. And they can get almost all of the functionality that you could out of the content search web part.